Good morning. Allie Benjamin here with Growing Edge Live. Your spiritual tune in and tune up. We get together here on Facebook every Sunday at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, 10 a.m. Mountain Time. We're here in on the East, well, well, not on the East Coast, we're here in Kentucky, and so we're in the Eastern Time Zone, so it's noon for us. I'd love to know where you're watching from, where are you, and I'd love to for you to post that, put that in the comments. So welcome to Growing Edge Live, Ali Benjamin here, Life on a Joyride. We're exploring this amazing country and uh, we're here in Kentucky and it's pouring with rain. We've had four days, five days, maybe six days of, of rain all the way from South Dakota and now we're here in Kentucky and it's been raining the whole time and my heart and my prayers go out to all of our friends and everyone in California and Washington and Oregon, anyone that is experiencing these devastating wildfires. So many prayers, so many hugs and loves are coming your way, waves from the rest of us that are, aren't experiencing the, the immense amount of fear and devastation that, that you're experiencing. So our prayers continue to, to support you where you are and if you want someone to talk to, uh, if you'd like to have prayer, meditation, we've got a group of practitioners that are ready and willing and able to support you wherever you are. Just put your um, instant message me, Alison Benjamin, and I'd love to connect you with, with one of our, our Conscious Living practitioners. So welcome everyone. I see Heather's here and Ben's here and Michael's here. Welcome, welcome. Where are you? Let us know where you are. Yep, we spent the night in Daniel Boone National Forest. And that was a special stop out, a detour for us to go into to Boone territory, seeing my children's last name is Boone. We thought that would be fun and they'd get a kick out of that. So here we go with Growing Edge Live. Free my open my heart with the whispers of truth to live a conscious life, to live a conscious life on the growing edge. You're on the growing edge. Yeah, we are on the growing edge and you're on the growing edge. And what that implies is that we each have the ability to stay at the very edge of our thought, to stay awake and aware about what's going on, who we are, and how we can participate in our own evolution. So welcome to Growing Edge Live. Ali Benjamin here, broadcasting from Kentucky. And uh, we're in the parking lot at the moment because we didn't have any cell range in Daniel Boone National Park. So we're, we're actually sitting in big lots, if you can believe it, with the rain pouring down. So welcome, welcome. As you jump on, I'd love it if you would post where you're watching from. And uh, so the message this morning, the thoughts, the thought-provoking ideas that I want to throw at you, lay down here, is what's next? I don't know about you, but I've been turning on, well, reading the headlines and uh, tuning in once in a while, and I'm just like flabbergasted at what's happening in our country, in our world. And I thought, what is next? Not only what's next, what other crazy thing could be happening, what's coming, but what's next for me? What's next for you? as we are awakening beings, as we are aware that our thoughts create, and I call that thought leader, we are thought leaders, we're aware of being aware, we're conscious of being conscious, we have a particular responsibility to, to be on the creative, innovative edge of our own development, our own evolution. And so what's next for you? What's next for me? As metaphysicians, as people that are completely awake and aware to the fact that our thoughts, our energies, our emotions, our actions impact not only our reality, but impact 
our relationships, impact our health, our finances, impact everything. We have to be keyed in. We have to be aware that we have a choice in each and every moment. So what's next? Knowing that you're a creative being, what's next? Knowing that thoughts create, what's next? Knowing that you're a spiritually awake, aware that you've got creative genius, that you are tuned in and tapped into a universal mind that is so much bigger than our, our own limited awareness, our own limited resources of thoughts and ideas that we can, if we become still enough, we can tap in to that creative medium, that greater mind. Knowing this, what's next? I want this mantra, I want these two words, or maybe three, what is next, what's next to sink in, to become something you talk about, you think about all the time because we're not static, we're not stuck, we don't have to take in all of the negativity around us and just feel stuck. We get to say, what's next? What's mine to do? What's mine to be? Another good question is, what is this for me? As, as we soak it all in, what is this for me? What is this evoking in me? Who am I becoming because of this? How am I becoming more aware of my love, of my genius, of my creativity, of my joy because of what's going on? Our discontent with things is an indicator that there's something more. There's something wanting to be birthed by means of, of you, by means of me. Something wants to happen. That discontent within us is a sure sign that something more magnificent, innovative, creative wants to happen. So we are centered in our own truth when we see ourselves this way. And this is what we can do. What's next? We can center ourselves. We can center ourselves in the truth that we are divine creative beings capable of having a new thought. We don't have to stay stuck in what's happened in the past. We don't have to create from that past perspective. We get to jump into real time. We get to jump into the now and create from this moment. Release the past. We've learned a lot from what's happened, but we get to create from what's possible now. So we are fully capable of responding and taking action and directing the flow of our energy. We're fully responsible to direct the flow of our energy. So if we focus on the past, if we focus on what's wrong, if we focus on who's crazy in the news, if we focus on all of the fear and, and the doubt and the uncertainty, if we find ourselves being critical, if we find ourselves being judgmental, we get to stop, surrender to the one power, and we get to direct our energy flow to that which we want to experience. So what is it that you want to experience? That's, once we know that, then we can direct our attention, our energy towards that. We give our attention to that which we want to experience. This is what we as metaphysicians, thought leaders, creative beings understand that we're aware of being aware, we're conscious of being conscious, and we direct our consciousness, we direct our thoughts, we direct our energy, we use our imagination to construct a future, a reality that we want to experience. It's up to us, it happens one thought at a time, one intention at a time, one dream at a time. We are dreamers. We are dream builders and dream makers and dreamers and we get to source and fund and fuel our dreams and our desires with our imagination, with our creative ideas, with the support of our friends, our family. We get to be creative, create a synergy, an energy that's greater than the sum of its parts by gathering with groups like this this Satya group, this Growing Edge Live, this Life on a Joyride virtual community 
and it's building, it's growing. And as we come together, as we, we throw in our energy, as we throw in our ideas, as we get creative, we begin to build this momentum that will be a force for good in the universe, be force a, for, for good on earth. If enough of us move from fear to faith, faith in the fact that our thoughts create, faith in the fact that we are creative beings, faith in the fact that we are beings that get to direct the flow of our energy to that which we want to experience, we will have change on this world, in this, on this earth plane. But it's up to us, it's up to each and every one of us to rise above the fear and to embrace our own creative powers. So when we get sucked into all of those lower vibratory energies of doubt, criticism, fear, uncertainty, comparison, all of those things that we, we tend to sink into when we're in the ego, when we edge God out and we, we live in that world, it's, it's a dark place, it's a narrow place, it's a small place, but as we open up, as we open up, we have the ability to respond differently. And that's why you're watching this broadcast. That's why you've been energetically drawn to tune in, to watch. Whether you're watching this live or whether you're watching this at some time in the future, you've been drawn to watch this, to join this virtual community, this Growing Edge Live community, this Life on a Joyride community because you want to create a better world. I know it. So I've taken the word ability and I've used the word ability. It's kind of like an acronym or words that stand for something that we as thought leaders, as change agents can embrace. So ability, able to become, intuit, love, innovate, think, and yield. So ability, the, we ha, we, we're able, each and every one of us are able to become. What does that mean, able to become? We're able to become more than we've ever been before. We're able to evolve, we're not static. We're very able beings. And when you inhabit that, when you occupy your ability to evolve, your ability to be a creative genius, and we, become that very energy that is so attractive. Have you ever been around someone that, that has the energy of evolution, of thought, thought leader, of, of being in charge of their life, they're able to manifest, work with the spiritual laws of the universe, like the law of cause and effect, the, the law of attraction. They seem to always seem to land on their feet they seem to be occupying their dream. They seem to be in relationships that are harmonious. Their health is vibrant. That the prosperity and, and abundance is flowing in their lives. You know those people. You're probably one of them. We're not in that vibe all the time. But if you're watching this, I have a sneaking suspicion that you know that. You are one of those people that are aware of your becoming. You're becoming more becoming more and never less. So ability stands for able to become intuit, intuit. We are intuitive beings. And if we spend time in meditation, in the stillness, being mindful, we open up to the greater mind. We were able to tap into the universal mind. You've heard me talk about our local mind, our ego mind, our discerning mind, our linear mind, really awesome. But when we're, we're activating our intuition, we're able to tap into the universal mind. This is an incredible awareness to have, that we get to intuit. We get to be so open that we're not bombarded by our little mind. We're able to quiet that mind and we're able to open up to allow universal mind to pour through us. How does that, what does that look like? We're able to realize, to know, to have an understanding of things that, we, that our linear mind is maybe unable to grasp. 
at this particular moment. So as we become available to the universal mind, the greater mind, we begin to have ideas that are beyond our, our current awareness. We're able to have a deeper understanding of what's happening around us. We're able to tune in to other people and other individuals and, and get a, a, a tap into to who they are at a, a, a deeper level. We're, we're able to discern more, yeah, this is good. We're able to discern more fully what's in alignment and what's out of alignment. Where our, our capability to discern is heightened. So this way of intuiting, tapping into the universal mind so that we can have a greater sense of who and what we are and a greater sense of what's happening around us. This is what happens when we activate the word ability. We're able to become, we're able to intuit, we're, we're able to love. We're able to inhabit unconditional love so that no matter what's happening around us, no matter, no matter what's going on, we're able to show up fully, wholeheartedly, embracing the moment, being our highest divine potential of love and joy and beauty. And so we have the ability to become, to intuit, to love. And the next one is innovate. When we tap in, to our ability to innovate, we then are able to make changes. This is, this is from Webster Dictionary. We're able to make changes in something that's already established, especially by introducing new methods, ideas, or products. Something new. That's what we're able to do. Again, we're not static beings. We haven't, we haven't um, burned through all of our resources. We have unlimited resources to be innovative, to bring something new into the world, to bring new ideas into the world. Again, when we're quiet, when we're open to the universal mind, we're able to bring forth something out of thin air. We're able to bring forth something that's never been here on earth before. Think of an artist, I'm a painter artist, and when I get still, and when I'm about to, to paint something, I go into a meditative state and I allow, I allow something to come through that's never come through before. I bring the invisible into form. We all do this, whether we're an artist, an accountant, a farmer, a school teacher, a principal, a florist, whatever we are, we bring the invisible into form. We innovate and that's a huge human potential that is a huge potential that we can tap into when we understand the word ability and how to activate become we're able to become intuit love innovate this is the next one's a good one think we're able to think we're able to understand the power of our thoughts and direct our thinking. We know that if we're thinking something negative, something sad, something heavy, that we can absolutely stop that, honor it, and move on. We can direct our awareness to something more powerful. We can think a new thought. We can think empowering thoughts. We can think thoughts that add to something that we're creating. We can think thoughts like, I want to give praise to, to that individual because they have so blessed my life. We can think thoughts that move us up into a higher vibration, that attract to us the life that, that we want, the experience that we want to have here on earth, the governments that we want to have, the institutions that we want to have, the, the organizations, the, the technology, the science, we get to think all this into reality. We don't have to stay stuck in the past with our thinking. We get to think new thoughts and create new things, be innovative, creative. So we are powerful thought leaders and creators. So that's, think is the, um, so A-B-I-L-T. Now we're up to why. Can you even imagine what word I've selected for why? Well, the word is yield. And I love this word, it, it means two different things. We're able to yield. As, as spiritual beings having human experience, we're able to produce, we're able to provide, we're able to bring forth things, stuff, 
matter, we're able to manifest, to bring forth our heart's harvest, our love. And when we bring forth, when we yield what's in us, when we are, we're, we're like distribution centers. We, we're open and receptive to the divine mind. We're open and receptive to our heart center. And we yield, we bring forth that which we, as unique, individualized expressions of spirit, want to bring forth into time and space. So what is it that you're yielding? What is it that you're blessing your family with? What is, is it that you have brought forth through the very fiber of your being, through your thinking, through your actions, through your emotions, through your heart, through your creativity, through your generosity? What are you yielding? That is something to behold. That is something to behold, to have a look. It's like the, the farmer that, that, and we've been driving through cornfields for days, and I'm just stunned and amazed at the, the corn that is produced in this, on this continent. And I look at those, those cornfields, and I, I can only imagine those farmers at some point standing there with their arms crossed, feeling a deep sense of satisfaction, whatever the crop might be, could be apples, could be plums, and could be soybeans, it could be a whole bunch of things. And looking at those crops, strawberries, yeah, I'm thinking strawberries, it could be at those crops of strawberries and thinking, wow, I am so blessed to have had the thoughts, the ideas, the, the support from Mother Earth, the sun, the rain, the soil, everything that went into producing this crop, this yield, how blessed am I? So can we look at our lives, all that we've yielded, all that we've produced, and just stand there and go, thank you God, thank you life, thank you universe, how blessed are we? And then we share it, then we share our yield. But yield means something else too, and this is really important. Yield means to give way to others. Yield means to me to, to when it's best, when it's right, we get to give way. We get to allow others. When our ego has been fixed on something and we realize that we've been wrong, we get to re yield and say, you know what, I wasn't right, you were right. Michael and I have had an opportunity to do that a lot during our, our 24 hours a day together in this tiny little camper van, our own shanty home. We get to yield to one another and say, you know what, I was wrong and you were right. And it's been a real growing experience. And in that word yield, there's also the seed of forgiveness. So is there someone that you are ready to forgive? Maybe it's yourself. Maybe you're ready for, to forgive yourself and, and love yourself a little bit more. So that's my word, ability. So able to become, intuit, love, innovate, think, and yield. Wow, we are creative beings. And that is a creative thing to embrace, your ability. Embrace ability, responsibility. You have a responsibility to respond and you have the ability to respond in this crazy world, in this crazy, crazy world, in this world where people are struggling and suffering, each of us get to rise up and respond. We have the ability, we have, we're able to become, intuit, love, innovate, think and yield. So peace and blessings to you. If this message has enriched your life and supported you today, we say thank you for your generous donations to Satya Center. You can Venmo us at S-A-T-Y-A-C-E-N-T-E-R. We're really, really grateful. But beyond that, we trust and know that this message, this new thought, this growing edge thought, oh, someone's arrived. This growing edge thought supports you in creating a beautiful, abundant, creative, healthy life full of rich and meaningful relationships. So let's go into prayer. Let's go into meditation. Let's go into activation, closing the outer eyes, opening the heart, and arriving in the awareness of one 
one, 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 one life, one power, one infinite organizing intelligence streaming through our hearts, our minds, the very fiber of our manifest being, our bodies. And as we embrace this oneness, as we embrace our wholeness, the fact that we are perfect, whole and complete, right where we are. And I hear those ambulance. That's the, the ability to respond to something, to, to respond to something and someone in need. That's what we're always doing. We're always responding in our hearts and in our minds to that vision, that desire that is coming through us our desire to be love, our desire to be wholeness, our desire to be joy. And as we respond to that inner invitation, that prompting, we relax in our yes. We relax in the ability, the ability that we're able to become, we're able to intuit, to love, to innovate, to think and to yield. We are powerful beings. We are creative beings. So let's say yes. Just hold your hands on your heart for a moment and just activate that sacred yes, your ability. Say yes, I am able. Yes, I'm becoming. Yes, I'm intuitive. Yes, I am loving. Yes, I'm innovative. Yes, I'm able to think a new thought. Yes, I'm able to yield plenty in my life. Yes, thank you, Spirit of Life. Thank you for the abundance that is so apparent in this moment. And let's direct our abundant thoughts, our abundant prayers, our abundant blessings to all those in need today, all those hot spots in Oregon, Washington, California and beyond, all those that are experiencing fear, uncertainty, terror, rage, sadness, and let's just douse them with a cool dose of love and flow of divine energy moving knowing that divine right order and action are taking place now. Let us know that people are feeling our love and our support, that where there is need, there is supply. Where there is demand, there is plenty. Where there is sadness, there is an influx of care and kindness. And so let us be that in our hearts and in our minds, right where we are let us realize our full ability to respond to whatever those around us need whatever is is seeking to respond through us whatever we are seeking to rise up to let it happen in our hearts and let us be grateful for all of our friends our family let us be grateful for all sentient beings right now May all beings without exception be safe from harm, be strong, be happy, be healthy, be whole, and live and love with ease now and always and in all ways. And I release this prayer knowing that it is done, that it is absolute right now in the here and now. So I release these words with absolute love in my heart. And let's take a deep breath, breathing in. Exhale, open the eyes. Peace and love and blessings to all of you. Lots of love. Bye-bye.